It feels like they have a holiday for basically everything these days. Am I right? In fact, today is World UFO Day. People from all around the world are having their own little UFO parties. People are gathering at the sites of UFO sightings. There's a lot of people partying down in Roswell, New Mexico today because today is actually the anniversary of the Roswell incident. Back on July 2nd, I believe it was 1947, the Roswell crash took place. As you know, that was a very secretive event. That event is what sparked all of this interest in UFOs. That was one of the main events that everyone can go back to. You know what I mean? But here we are, July 2nd of 2024, and now aliens and UFOs are being openly discussed on the news. Congressional hearings about aliens and UFOs are being live streamed right here on YouTube. It's a very interesting time to be alive, to say the least. But even though this topic is being openly discussed and more whistleblowers are coming forward, I still have a hard time trusting some of these whistleblowers. And maybe that's just because I have a hard time trusting people in certain government agencies, these top secret government agencies, who's to say that they're not still working for them? You know, purposely spreading misinformation and disinformation to get us off the trail of the truth. You know, you really, you just, the level of mind games and stuff that is played on the American public and on people all around the world it's absolutely insane once you start peeling back the layers and you realize some of the wild stuff that takes place around us every single day. But the topic of UFOs and aliens, it's a more, there's more of an open discussion about it now than ever. And I do think that's a good thing. And you know, personally, we just had that debate between Donald Trump and Joe Biden, and I was hoping that they would be asked a question about UFOs because I would like the next president-elect to be pressed a little more about this UFO topic because you can't just come out and tease us in the way that, they've ha in the way that they have lately. Coming out and saying, oh yeah, these videos of these UFOs, they're real. But hey, we're not going to say anything else. It's like, obviously, they have more information. But then the question is, how will people react to that information? Maybe me and you, a lot of you watching this video, we can handle whatever info comes out. But how will the masses handle it? And just look at what we've went through the past couple of years. The masses can't really handle a whole lot, people. I mean, look at what happened with the lockdowns. Look at how many people freak out about who's elected president. I mean, we, some of us may be ready, but then you have to ask yourself, are we even ready? Because what if the info that comes out shatters the way we look at life? Because that is a possibility. But before I go on and on about this, I want to go ahead and roll this news clip really quickly, and then I'll be right back with more right, thoughts. Millions around the globe and maybe even beyond are celebrating World UFO Day. Okay, July 2nd is the anniversary of the 1947 crash of an unidentified flying object in Roswell, New Mexico, which the Army later said was a scientific balloon. Mm-hmm. 75 years later, the government still says there's no evidence of non-human life. But that narrative has started to shift since News Nation's bombshell interview with UFO whistleblower David Grush. When you say crash retrieval, what do you mean? Uh, these are retrieving non-human origin uh, technical vehicles, you know, call it spacecraft if you will. Non-human, exotic origin vehicles that have either landed or crashed. This jaw-dropping News Nation exclusive leading to congressional hearings and a federal UFO program. 
a member of the intelligence community and a pioneer in getting to the truth is News Nation special correspondent Ross Coulthard. Sir, I love when you are on the show because each time it kind of gives me chills because part of me wants to know, the other part of me is like, I don't want to know, Ross. As someone who has spent decades investigating UAPs, how has the perception of UFOs changed over the last year, specifically after David Rush's claims went public? Good morning, Nick. Well, I can tell you there's been a real drift in uh, the public's scepticism about the government's claims on UFOs. A, a vast majority, nearly 66% of Americans, think the US government is concealing information about UFOs, and that's from a, a very recent poll. And I think there's good reason for that scepticism. I, I think the even senators... Uh, senior people in the Defence Department and intelligence community are now saying quite openly that they believe there's a lot more to be revealed by the US Department of Defence, the intelligence community and indeed by the White House about what the government really knows. And I, I don't think uh, the public's buying it anymore. I, I, I think the public is basically ready for answers and frankly, a lot of people are telling me they want this to be an election issue. They clearly wanted to be uh, top of mind because you just mentioned that poll showing the 65 percent of Americans believe intelligent life exists beyond Earth. Why are more people taking the conversation more seriously, Ross? Is it because we're talking about it more or is it because they have less faith and maybe political leaders always telling them the truth? I think, I think, to be honest with you, I think Americans have, have every reason to be sceptical about their government. They've been lied to in the past as a pretext for going to war. And I do think that the evidence is increasingly suggesting that the American government is, and incredible as this may sound, it is concealing its knowledge of a non-human intelligence. And as you know, I'm hearing this not just from David Grush, but from multiple sources who are allegedly working within what's called the Legacy Program, which is a secret program being operated by the US government involving the retrieval of non-human technology. And I have to say, yes, this, this particular day that we're celebrating World UFO Day. It honours the memory of a day, July the 2nd, 1947, when the Roswell crash happened. But I think the, the interesting thing is there's been a lot more crashes since, and those recoveries, those retrievals of craft, continue to this day. And it's incredible as that may sound, there are now very authoritative people in the defence and intelligence community saying that the government needs to come straight about this, uh, that, that essentially it's not being honest with the American public. And I think if you look at the legislation that's been drafted by the Congress demanding that the um, various arms of government disclose what they know about non-human intelligence technology, which is an incredible thing to be written in legislation. If Congress is prepared to write that, it means it knows something. And, and it does. I and can Ross, assure you it does. It's important also to mention, though, even though you spoke with David Grush on the record, you had other sources telling you this information as well. So we will continue to follow this, Ross, because you know we love this stuff. Ross Coltart, thank you so much, sir. Good to talk to you, Nick. Uh, you know, good to talk aliens and UFOs is a very touchy subject for some people. But the rabbit hole runs really deep. But what we have to do, those of us who may know a little bit more than others, what I think happens is often people lay this stuff on people too thick, right? Like, trust me, when I say the rabbit hole runs deep, it runs very deep. And a lot of people aren't ready for that, you know, boatload of information to be just dropped on their lap. You kind of have to spoon feed a lot of people, especially these days. So I don't think, even though I'm all for disclosure, even though I want to know the truth, I don't know if just dropping it all on people at once, I don't know if that's a good thing. And I say that as someone who wants to know the truth, like you could drop it all on me. It may freak me the hell out, but I, I, I'm willing to, you know, to take whatever, whatever comes with the knowledge. You know what I mean? But some people, you kind of got to spoon feed people 
Because some people are just coming around to like, okay, you know, UFOs maybe are real. Maybe aliens are a thing. So you can't get into like the deep, dark depths of the rabbit hole, you know, about secret government bases and the mountains and aliens harvesting souls on the moon and contracts between aliens and the U.S. government and the fact that, hey, maybe some of these abductions are really just the U.S. government and the CIA doing tests and that's not even aliens. But hey, there's the tall whites, there's the grays, there's the reptilians. I mean, there's a lot of stuff out there that you just can't drop on people at once. So I think that maybe what we're witnessing now is we're witnessing the general public kind of being spoon-fed. And they're being spoon-fed at such a slow rate that, you know, maybe it may be decades from now and, and we're still watching these people be spoon-fed. Like, they're just now coming around to, okay, maybe UFOs are a thing. You know, we've already, most of us, we've already been there years ago. But the general public is now coming around to it. So, uh, I say all this to say that even though this is a topic of discussion right now, and even though the U.S. government is kind of putting tidbits of information out there, it may still be a very, very long time before we get anywhere even near the truth, before we get anywhere near them basically coming out and saying, yeah, we're aware of alien life. Because they've they've said, hey, you know, the UFOs, we don't know of this technology from Earth. They've come out and said stuff like that, but they have not acknowledged that they know for a fact that there is sentient life out there, uh, you know, that's not human. You know, they have not gotten around to that yet. And I think that they may not even get around to that in our lifetime at this point, at the rate that they have to spoon feed certain people. And then again, you have to ask yourself, Dropping this knowledge on people isn't necessarily a good thing. It may be, it, you may think it's a good thing for me and you, but is it a good thing for the general public? How will it disrupt the way the world operates? You know, will people just throw all reason to the side because, oh, aliens exist, so we don't care about anything now. Will chaos break out in the streets? Or will people just say, oh, okay, cool, and just keep going about their day to day? I think they want to get the general public to the point where they'll be so distracted and worried about everything else that they won't even care. You know, they'll come out and say, hey, here's an alien. He's right here next to me on CNN. Meet Gloop Glorp. You know, and people will be like, who cares? We're playing freaking video games on Twitch and we're doing this and we're doing that. But we'll have to see, folks. Like I said, very interesting times. Let me know your thoughts about this, though, down in the comments below. While you're down there, hit that thumbs up, hit that subscribe, ring that notification bell, and I'll talk to you all soon in the next one.